Hello YouTube, from my name is your old team, so we're called World War 2, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So the Black Ops 4 news just never seems to end, right? It seems like every day there's a new interview or a new leak or a new article being posted, and today is going to be no different. So a lot has been made recently about Black Ops 4's Blackout Battle Royale game mode, because a lot of fans are interested to see what Call of Duty is going to offer the genre, but they didn't really give us a lot in the way of details or specifics during the Black Ops 4 reveal. That's why over the course of the past couple of days, we've been able to learn more about the game mode via a series of interviews with developers, and yesterday, Treyarch's Matt Scrantz and Yale Miller sat down with Finder to give us some more information about the Blackout Battle Royale game mode. There's a link to the full interview down there in the description if you guys like to read the full thing for yourselves, but to quickly summarize what we've learned, Blackout will not be a standalone game or sold separately. It will come with the game at launch and release on all platforms at the same time. There will not be any advantages for people playing on the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X because all consoles will play at 60 frames per second, but the people who have the better consoles will simply have better graphics. The player count is apparently still being determined even though we're pretty close to launch, but they're still working on the player count. They're testing out really high numbers and really low numbers as well. And apparently, supply drops may be tied to Blackout, though we have no idea how that's going to work as of right now. And really quickly, I would like to focus on that part of the interview, the supply drop part, right? Because I think what they have done here is they have inadvertently shed some light on the microtransaction system in Call of Duty, and they've also shed some light on the relationship between the developers and Activision, because for years now, everybody has been saying that Activision is the reason why all the bad things in Call of Duty exist, right? They're the reason why supply drops are the way they are, and microtransactions are the way they are, but apparently, according to this interview, it's looking like the developers may actually have some say, because in the interview, senior producer Yale Miller was asked about loot boxes in Blackout, to which he said, as far as loot boxes and things of that nature go, we're focused solely on the game, right? What is going to be playable at launch? What are the things players get to do? How the company and Activision decide to distribute that stuff isn't something I personally have insight into. So it's looking like, based on what Yale said here, the developers do help make decisions alongside Activision, and they aren't 100% powerless when it comes to microtransactions and how they're handled in their games. This is likely why the supply drop model gets changed and updated every single year, and it's looking like supply drops will not only be part of Black Ops 4 because it was confirmed that COD points are coming back, but it's also looking like the Blackout Battle Royale game mode is also going to have supply drops and loot boxes, and that's probably how we are going to be able to unlock all the iconic characters that are going to be in the game. Now, of course, until we get some sort of a disgruntled employee, which I've been waiting for one of these for like 10 years now, where are these disgruntled employees? Until somebody comes out and actually tells it like it is and gives us the inside scoop of what's really happening on the inside, we're really just left to speculate, right? We really have no idea how it's actually handled, but I thought that was a particularly interesting part of the interview, and another interesting part of the interview was when Matt Scrantz was asked about if the team is worried about the competition from PUBG and Fortnite this year, and how hostile the communities are no doubt going to get, because when games start competing, things get hostile online. Need I remind you guys about the Battlefield versus Call of Duty rivalry? That's going to be rekindled this year, because apparently Battlefield 5 is coming, apparently it's going to be World War 2, so not only is COD competing with that, but it's also competing in the same genre as PUBG. PUBG and H1Z1 and Fortnite, and Matt replied by saying, Oh, that's how we like it. We wouldn't do this if we didn't think we could do it best and better than everybody else. We've got a huge library of content, 10 years of history, we've got the best gunplay out there, we've got the best movement, so we're not too worried about it. Honestly, we're just worried about making this damn thing as fun as possible. I've got to say, I love that response. I love the confidence here. Those are some pretty bold words, but I'm still worried about the game mode, right? Because on one hand, they're talking a big game, but on the other hand, they're afraid to give us any accurate information in regards to player count and map size. And I think it's because the player count is going to be well below the industry standard of 100, and the map size will probably be much smaller than we anticipated. They keep telling us that they're still working on the mode and that it's still in development, which makes sense. I mean, I, I can understand why they don't want to let the cat out of the bag too early, but at the same time, we are 143 days away from the official release of this game, and you would think that Blackout would be finished well before the actual release, right? So I feel like they're very close to being done with this game mode, but they're still afraid to give us any accurate information, and I think that's because they're afraid of what the backlash is going to be. There has been a lot of speculation recently about the Blackout map size, with some people estimating that the map is going to be less than half the size of the Fortnite map, which would be a travesty on all accounts, but recently, 
recently, Drifter made his video covering the map size, and it's a fantastic video. Link to that down there in the description. And in there, he breaks down why the Blackout map is only going to be slightly smaller than the Fortnite map, which is pretty good news all around. But right now, we don't know much more about the map itself. The only official image we have is what we saw during the reveal trailer. And while we learned some cool things from the reveal trailer, we didn't learn all that much about the game mode. So I don't know about you guys, but I am so ready for an actual gameplay trailer. I hope that this is going to be part of the private beta. But as always, we're going to just have to wait and see how it plays out and wait for more details to be given to us by Treyarch. And speaking of details, I have one final bit of news regarding Blackout before we wrap up the video here today. David Vonderhaar ends up doing an interview with PlayStation recently, and in there, he confirmed that Blackout will be 100% first person. There were some rumors circulating that maybe the game mode would be third person because we're talking about cool skins and characters and now potentially loot boxes coming to the mode, but it's looking like the combat is all going to be first person. But I have to wonder, how are they going to deal with vehicles, right? Because I imagine third person is going to make its way in here somehow, whether it's driving around ATVs and Jeeps or dropping in from the sky or activating traps or doing stuff like that because it's hard to sell skins and cosmetics for a game mode where the only thing you can see on your character would be your hands and a little bit of your forearm, right? So first person is not exactly great for selling skins. I have to wonder how exactly this business model is going to work out. As always, I will keep you guys up to date with more information as it becomes available. And speaking of more information, one final, final bit of news for this video. This actually just came out while I was recording this. Sledgehammer just gave us their weekly community update, which was not jam-packed with information, but they did say that next week they're giving us a big game update. They've also said that they're giving us a free Valkyrie open access weekend where anybody can play on that map, regardless of what map packs they have. And while playing in that game mode, you will get double experience, double division experience, and double weapon experience. And they've also given us some details regarding a new bravery pack that's going to be added to the game as part part of the Call of the Endowment on May 29th. There's a link to the full blog post down there in the description if you guys are interested, but it's looking like a very big update is coming next week and patch notes are going to be released in the next couple of days. And as always, once again, I will update you guys as we learn more. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section below. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.